Dit is Papa Alpha Nel Eco Tango Eco voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate voor vandaag 12 december 2015. Dit is het bulletin van zaterdag. Vandaag hebben we contestia in de uitzending met de gebruikelijke instellingen. De uitzendingen van de Daily Minutes in het weekend zijn in het Engels. All our weekend shows are in English. This show we do have contestia with the familiar properties. We will start with the propagation bulletin of the RSGB from this weekend. Hello, this is Mike Marsh, G1IAR, and welcome to the TX Talk podcast of the GB2RS National News. Now the radio propagation report compiled by G0 Kilo Yankee Alpha, Golf 4 Bravo Alpha Oscar, and Golf 3 Yankee Lima Alpha on Friday the 11th of December. This week's been another week with an elevated solar wind stream from coronal holes. This had a negative effect on the geomagnetic field, which reached storm levels at times again, with visible aurora at higher latitudes. The solar wind often had a south-facing magnetic BZ component, which meant it coupled more easily with the Earth's magnetic field. The solar flux index stayed around the 110 mark, but the geomagnetic KP index hit 4 and even 5 at times, reflecting the storm conditions. The Chilton Ionason at Harwell showed a critical frequency of 7.8 MHz at noon on Wednesday, indicating a maximum usable frequency of around 26 MHz over a 3,000 km path. This also showed that 40 metres was usable for inter-G contacts at least around the late morning and the early afternoon periods. 15 metres, that's 21 megahertz, remains the highest HF band to support reliable long-distance communications. Next week should see the solar flux index in the range of 100 to 120 and the KP index may indicate continued unsettled geomagnetic conditions hitting 4 at times. The end of the week is likely to be more settled. December remains a great month to get on the lower bands including 160, 80 and 40 metres where DX may be found during the long nights. And now the VHF and upwards propagation news. Well, this week expect neutral tropospheric conditions at first, but we're starting to see some signs of a ridge of high pressure developing close to the southeast of England during the week. This might give slight help for tropo paths into the continent and across the North Sea into southern Scandinavia. Unfortunately, this isn't supported in all models, as some keep the low pressure over the country through the whole week. Now, in these changeable patterns, the forecast models often diverge after a few days, and since this is being written early, it's perhaps not surprising that there are variations beyond the following midweek. Meteor activity is on the agenda again, with a fairly broad peak of the Geminid shower, which is centred on Monday night, that's December the 14th. Look up the band plan and operating techniques, or just simply listen in and watch the Oscar November 4 Kilo Sierra Tango chat to hear what goes on during these events. Try 6, 4 and 2 metres. Moon declination starts to increase this week so moon windows will lengthen and after yesterday's apogee losses will start to decrease. From the UK the moon will be up from lunchtime to early evening getting progressively later as the week goes on. And that's all from the propagation team for this week. Raynet groups in the north of England and Scotland were active during last weekend's flooding incidents. In Lancashire, Central Lancashire Group were called out on Saturday at 10.35am and the other two groups put on standby, that's Ribble Valley Raynet, had already been called out. Operators were on the ground and sent to attend control, the CCTV Centre, the Environment Agency Incident Room and Clitheroe Central. Raynet was stood down at 8pm. In Scotland, Lothian's Raynet were placed on standby on Saturday at 3.30pm. Two Lothian 4x4 response vehicles were at Howick and Newcastleton. The group were finally stood down at 8.25am on Sunday. Northumberland Raynet was placed on standby at 9pm Saturday for possible deployment to the Hayden Bridge area of Northumberland. They were stood down at 7.10am on Sunday morning. Cumbria Raynet was called out at 8am on Monday, but deployment was difficult as most of the roads were already completely flooded.
Patterdale suffered a complete loss of communications. The group was stood down at 4pm when communications began to be restored. The RSGB Amateur Radio Observation Service has noted several examples of British JT-65 and JT-9 mode transmissions straying outside of the UK allocated band slots. It's understood that software commonly used by UK licensees for the production of signals in both modes uses default 5 MHz band preset frequencies of 5.357 MHz for JT65 or 5.359 MHz for JT9. After applying the audio offset to the AFSK signal in JT65 mode, using these presets will, in the majority of cases, cause the transmission to fall outside of the upper band edge of the UK allocation of 5.354 MHz to 5.358 MHz. In the case of JT9, if the default is 5.359 MHz used, then all transmissions will be outside of the UK allocation. Users of these modes are requested to check their transmissions do fall within the allocated spectrum. Next Tuesday, on the 15th of December at 1100 hours UTC, British European Space Agency astronaut Tim Peake will be launched on his mission to the International Space Station. It'll be televised nationally on BBC One and streamed live on bbc.co.uk so that everyone can have a chance to watch this historic event. During his stay on the ISS, he plans to make contact with selected schools within the UK via the ARIS programme, supported by the RSGB, and the first of these is programmed for the first week of the new year. Regular updates are available at rsgb.org slash principia.